My name is Jarda Borovička. I'm from Mladá Boleslav, and my wife and I, we came to the U.S. in 2006 for our graduate studies and stayed here. Um, so um, I'm currently associate professor at NYU, and I teach and do research in economics. So today I'll try to do what I can. I'm going to tell you something about the research and uh, that, that I do and, and what I teach. So... Um, uh, so what I want to tell you about is how actually like research in economics uh, actually is conducted because there's many different views of like what economics actually is. Okay, so what's kind of like the chronology of, of a research project? So economics works just like any other field. Okay, we collect data, we form research questions, um, we form our theories and, and build economic models that very much look like applied mathematics. And then hopefully we get answers. And uh, when these answers are interesting enough, hopefully they get published. Um, so, um, so let's start and actually what I want to do, is I want to walk you through, through these steps. So, so this particular project uh, with my co-authors uh, studies attitudes uh, that people have toward uh, inflation and toward, uh, 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 toward prevailing economic conditions. So what we, st what we looked at is data on uh, inflation forecasts that, that households actually made. So, so there are many surveys that ask households, what will inflation in the next year be? And inflation obviously is now a big problem. But when you look, actually look at the horizontal axis, okay, so the dispersion of these, uh, uh, of these forecasts is massive. So some people say inflation will be 15%, some people say inflation will be minus 5%, and so on. So the dispersion is not so surprising. What is surprising is that people who expect high inflation also expect the labor market conditions to be very bad. They expect unemployment to go up. And when you look at people who expect high inflation, they in general expect a worsening economy. Okay? Which, which, is, which is striking because there is no obvious reason why higher or lower inflation on average should be, uh, should be a problem. If you, if you actually look at the past 30, 40 years uh, before the current inflation wave, uh, typically I, it was inflation that was too low that was a problem. Okay. Similarly, when you look at data from, uh, okay, so you can see it, from the Bank of England uh, that asked people, would, uh, how would we econ uh, the economy do if inflation was higher? People would typically say, oh, the economy would actually do much worse. And this was particularly striking during the financial crisis between 2007 and 2009, okay, when these measures really spiked, when every single central banker would tell you, yeah, we actually need more inflation. Infl inflation would actually s particularly solve some of the problems. Inflation at the time was, was indeed very low. And there is, there is agreement that this was the case. But people thought very differently about the problem. So now the question is, if people think about the problem very differently than the policymakers, okay, can that actually have an impact on the economy? Because when people make forecasts, that affects their decisions, okay, that affects the general economy, and that feed, feeds back to, to economic conditions. So the question is, how do you want to answer that? Okay? Well, the only way is to build a theory. And here, you, you need to combine two theories, one that is a theory of how people actually form these beliefs or these, these attitudes toward future inflation and toward economic conditions. Okay, so we need a theory of so-called belief formation. And we need to combine it with a model that tells us how economy actually behaves over the business cycle. Okay, so like when do, when, like what happens in expansions and in recessions. Okay? And then we use this theory to evaluate, like the, uh, e evaluate uh, the predictions and see whether they actually align with the data. Okay. So, so the idea is to propose this, uh, in this paper, is to propose a particular theory of this belief formation and formalize in a model the relationships between households, firms, and the central bank and how all these uh, entities interact, right? Because there are millions and millions of households, millions and millions of firms, and a central bank with a central banker like in the Czech Republic who is pretty controversial, or, or a central banker like in the US who is less controversial. Okay, okay? and then uh, the, uh, the model involves a lot of quantification because the question is uh, not whether these attitudes actually affect the economy, it's to which extent. We know they affect the economy for sure, but is it a tiny little bit or, or, or a massive amount? And for that we need to build a quantitative model using math 
and using computers because a lot of these models are simply very complicated. And the model will ultimately help us quantify okay, uh, this question and, and separate uh, cause and effect, right? because everything affects everything else in the economy. Okay? And the model also helps us uh, ask counterfactual questions, like what would happen if, if the attitudes of the people were different from what we actually see in the data? Okay? So this is part of the mathematics. Like, so a typical page from the paper looks like this. And this is part of the computer code that we need to write and involves tens of thousands of lines. Okay. And what is the answer? Well, the answer is the impact actually turns out to be large in our study. Okay. So, so how do we evaluate that? That's an important question. So what the particular object that we measure is unemployment. And what we want to see is how unemployment varies over time in the data and what our model actually predicts. Right? And so, so this is the data, the orange line, and the blue okay, is what the model predicts. And it's far from perfect because no model is perfect. But the key question is, okay, so, so what actually is the main contribution of, uh, of the model is, what is actually part of the, uh, 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 of the fluctuations predicted by, by the model that comes from the subjective attitudes of people? Well, there's a distinction between the red line and the blue line. So it seems that the, uh, that the attitudes contribute quite a lot to, to fluctuations in unemployment. Okay. All right. So what are the further steps? Is this a definitive answer? No, because we only took the model and tested it using in one particular environment. So this needs to be generalized. So many other people need to work on this to be, uh, for this to be settled. And what comes next? Obviously, publication. If you want to be successful in academia, you have to publish. Okay. And then follow-up research, because successful ideas and infectal ideas have broad applicability. And yeah, so that's what I do. And I'm glad I finished on time, because my teaching evaluations always mention two things, crazy exams, and he never knows when to finish the lecture. Yeah. <laughs>